pokintereket beépítve épületeket kiegészítve, de közlekedés szempontjából nagyon hasonló körülmények voltak, még a villamos is ugyanez volt, amikor még itt erre jártunk, és ez így alakult át 2014-re a négyes megtoválítása kapcsán. Nagyon nagy átalakulása az, amit láthatunk, sokkal több gyalogos terület, közvetlen zebrák, felszínen, akadályos átkerések, de azért lehetett volna nyilván még inkább klímatudatosan megalkotni ezt a teret, mert mindenképpen egy nagy átalakítás, de már most is korábban is voltak ilyen típusú fejlesztések. A másik jól ismert példa az a terenciakre, szintén az elmúlt uh, évtizedben alakult át, ehhez nagyon hasonló állapotából uh, egy jóval jobban. Itt még látható, bocsánat, még a 70-es évek elején, hogy akkor még léteznek a felszín darabák Ezek a metróépítés összefüggésben gyakorlatilag teljesen eltűntek, és, uh, és egy város autópálya lett, hogy a Kossuth-Törös utcán álló cívút menjen. És bár nem mondhatjuk a tökéletesen a képen, az egész látszódik, de nagyon fontos volt, hogy a belváros főutcai a programban gyakorlatilag ez a keresztirány, ez humanizálásra került, tehát zebra, tehát lehet sétálni, most is lehet sétálni, ugyanakkor nem teljes a kép, hiszen a rámenő és Kossuth-Törös utcán álló cívút menjen, ez gyakorlatilag érintetlen maradt. Tehát azt látjuk, hogy egy nagy lépés, de még mindig nem elhelyező. És a még egy másik jól ismert példa, a Vörös Mati tér, hogy nézett ki annó, hiszen sokszor elhangzik, hogy Sétel utca kapcsán, hát nem lehet tenni a Váci utca, nem lehet tenni a Vörös Mati tér, és azt látjuk, hogy a Vörös Mati tér is nagyon más képet festett néhány évtizeddel korábban, mint 1978 ez a kép ismerjük, jól ismerjük, hogy maga nincs ki, tehát igenis van lehetőség változásra. Igazából ezekkel kapcsolatban az az állításunk, hogy ez nagyon jó, csak nem elegendő. Nem elegendő az az értelem, hogy nem elég zöld, nem elég gyalogos, nem elég nagy lépés forgalmasabbításban, és legfőképpen nem elegendő egyszerűen darabszámra. Tehát fel tudom mutatni sok olyan teret, ami az elmúlt igazából 10-15 évben meg újult, előre mutató módon, és elegendő most nem egy teljes körülű felsorolás volt, mindenkinek ajánlom azt a kiállítást, amit a Városháza Parkonak Árvédő Mentén van. Nagyon érdekes és, és bizonyos szempontból uh, kinyitja az ember, felnyitja az embernek a szemét. De hogy ez nem elég, mert hogy egyszerűen a város nagyon nagy. Ez néhány példa. Tehát, hogyha ilyen lépésekben haladunk, akkor nem fogunk a végére érni soha. És ez az állításunk, hogy hogy egyszerűen nagyon léptékű átalakításra van szükség, hatékonyabb eszközökkel, olcsóbb eszközökkel, gyorsabb eszközökkel. Uh, igen, még egy adalék a történethez, hogy mindez, mindenközben a Budapest elszemült egy olyan lakosságvesztés, ami az elmúlt évtizedekben, ha évtizedes állatokban nézzük, akkor egy konstant vesztés volt az a Budámok, de ugye még a központi régi összeségében nő a lakosság, ebben Pest megye kifejezetten nő a lakosság, a lakosság egyébként nem csak a lakosság száma, hanem az autó száma is nő, de Budapestnek csökken az itt élő száma, ebben jól láthatóan van egy kiköltözési hullám is, amit nehéz nem összefüggésbe hozni egyébként a belvárosnak az élhetőségével, hiszen egyébként ez a kiköltözés pont a belvárost érint meg inkább. Viszont azt is látjuk, hogy a szolgáltatások az a termelési és az agglomerációban, a kiköltözés és az odaköltözés az egy folyamatosan növekvő ingázás irányú Budapest felé. Tehát nő az autóknak a száma, napi több mint 300 ezer autó érkezik Budapestre, és egyszerűen az olyan nyomást helyez a városra, ami nagyon megnehezíti azt, hogy elegendő teret biztosítsuk a városban gyalogosoknak, kerékvárosoknak, fáknak, játszótereknek, teraszoknak. Tehát, hogy van ez a nagyon nehéz alapvető helyzet. Igen, és ehhez képest nem új uh, hozzáállást igyekszünk követni az elmúlt években, és tervezünk a következő időszakra. Jóval nagyobb uh, hangsúlyt szeretnénk tenni az élhetőségre, és azon belül kifejezetten a gyalogos és a kerékpáros élhetőségnek a javítására. Miért van ez? Ugye azért, mert Alapvetően az egész kiköltözés problémának az mondjuk, hogy kettő megoldása van. Az egyik a lakhatási piac, tehát hogy nagyon drágák a lakások, 
rossz a, a lakás portfólió elosztása, hogy rengeteg igényt nem tudunk kiszolgálni, a másik az érhetőség. Úgyhogy az elsőben nagyon kevés Budapestnek a lehetősége, egy másik alkalommal lehet a szintén tud meg Bécsről tanulni, mert a lakási kérdések azok például a Bécsben, de ebben nagyon korlátozott a fővárosnak a, a mozgás lehet. Viszont a közterületekkel, a közlekedéssel kapcsolatban igenis van lehetőség itt alakítani, úgyhogy ezért van az a hangsúlyunk, hogy változtasson, javítsuk az élhetőségét a városnak, ezzel is vonzóvá tenni az itt élőknek, vagy az itt Budapesten dolgozni tervezőknek, hogy idejönnek az emberek is itt élnek. Mert hogy egy város nem csak azért van, hogy közlekedjünk benne, hanem hogy éljünk is. Mert hogy ezt fontos nem elfelejteni, mert Budapest az otthonunk, és ennek megfelelően kell megterveznünk a közvetlenül is. Néhány példát fogok most hozni, ezek közül az első a Pesti Alsonapartnak a, a témája. Két, mind a két rakpart, mint gyakorlatilag az elmúlt évtizedekben két városi autópályaként használt műszaki infrastruktúra van, és az elmúlt években a Pesti oldalával elkezdtünk kísérletezni, ami még a Covid idején kezdődött, már nem volt a, a főpolgármesternek a választási programjában is, és ezek alapján folytattuk a, a kezdőfejlődők a programokat. Szóval a Covid idején kezdtük el először a hétvégéken megnézni a Pesti Alsonapartot, arra reagálva, hogy a pandémia miatt hatalmas igény keletkezett a nyílt közterek iránt. De talán még emlékszünk rá, hogy mindenki került a zsúfoltságot, viszont kereste a szabadidős lehetőségeket, és ebben egy ö, rövid állapot után egyértelmű volt, hogy a nyílt közteleknek a kinyitása ö, az mindig ez egy jó megoldás. És a belátásban nagyon kevés az ilyen lehetőség, ahol el lehet menni rekreációs térként használni, vagy szabadidős térként használni, sétálni, biciklizni, kocogni, beszélgetni, és ezzel kezdtük meg 2020-tól a rakpartnak a kinyitását amit aztán már követett egy korábbi projektnek a, az áttervezése és kivitelezése volt, valódi fasorra, szélesebb sétánya, gyakorlatilag elértük azt, hogy a rakpart mentén most a végig lehet sétálni a Rákosbataktól egészen a Lánchídig, és lassan és már tovább az elsőleti irányában. Tipikus ilyen taktikai urbanisztikai eszközökkel foglalkoztunk a, itt a rakpart, illetve való megtöltésével, nyilván meg kell említeni azoknak a partnereknek, a városi fölvédésre, akikkel együtt dolgoztunk. És az idei élő végén jutottunk oda, hogy egy színszépés történt vendéglátással, sokkal több növényel, komolyabb bútorokkal, itt a mahartal és a főkertel között megállapodással, együttműködésben be tudtuk rendezni a Pesti Alsorakvartot, ami azt gondoljuk, hogy szimbolikus erejű, vagy értékdoktor a szempontból, hogy a tereket kell létrehozni a városban, és a belváros ebből nyilván kiemelt jelentőségű, hiszen az egész város egészének fontos az, hogy a belső területeknek milyen a érhetőség, milyen a sétálhatóság, a biztonsághatósága. Ez csak néhány kép, amit a jövőre tervezünk következő években a rakparton, de most mi ebben nem megyek be, mert akkor egy kis promóció, pénteken 11 órától lesz egy eseményünk a megnyitott az autómentes nap alkalmából megnyitott Csihányi rakparton, ahol bemutatjuk majd a rakparton kapcsolatos terveket, és egy irányi terveket számunkra nagy szeretettel. Új kerékváros infrastruktúra, szintén a Covid évéhez kell visszagolni, hiszen ekkor történt az, hogy tapasztalva növekvő igényt a kerékpározásért, a város néhány korábbi termék a leporolásával és gyors megvalósításával nagyon tépett a kerékpásárlók a létesítésében. Ugye itt ezek közül utána a nagykörült az, amit leginkább maradható vendégeket okozott a fővárosi nyilvánosságban, de nem csak a nagykörült, hanem a Bartóbéla úton, a Tétényi úton, a Maros utcában, a Sávokilányi úton, és az Ülői úton is hoztak létre kerékpásárlókat. Ezek közül az Ülői kivételével meg is maradt és a mai napig szolgált a kerékpározást, hogy az ülői út esetében pedig a megfogtatás után tudtuk ezeket újra felfesteni. De nyilván nem csak ezek a pop-up kerékpársállók, hanem más kerékpáros beruházásokkal is kívánok segíteni a kerékpározást. A 
békák megvalósításában most ezekben a hónapokban egy több milliárdos csomagban valósulnak meg kerékpáros fejlesztések, elsősorban ezek külvárosi területeken. 15. 10. 20. kerületben már nagyjából be is fejlesztődik ezek a beruházások, második, harmadik, tehát a 13. és 11. kerületben pedig mostanában töröttek fel, úgyhogy kifejezetten fontos számunkra, hogy csak a belvárosban legyenek ilyen projektek, hanem a külvárosban is egy kicsit a kerékpározás. És egy újabb műfaj, ugye említettem már a, a külői utat, Budapesten az első igazán hosszú védett kerékpárságai jöttek létre most nyáron a Váci úton és az Üli úton. Az igazán hosszú kitétel csak azért lett, mert egyébként egy rövid szakaszon, már korábban az Üli út esetében, az MVM tó esetében, annak a szomszédságban egy kormányzati beruházásként már lépésű forrása. De ilyen összefüggő hozban, több kilométeres hozban ezek az első olyan kerékpárságok, amelyek fizikai védelmet is nyújtanak az itt biciklizőknek. Azt gondoljuk, hogy nagyon fontos a kerékpárosoknak a szubjektív biztonságérzetének a növelése, mert ahhoz, hogy olyan emberek, akik ma még nem feltétlenül mernek biciklire ülni, ahhoz szükséges védett kerékpáros infrastruktúrát kialakítani, hogy ezek közül az ülőlési láci volt az első. Új, új zebrák kiemelt köztöveteken, rengeteg zebra létesül a városban, de rengeteg olyan helyszínen, amiről nem érkezik híd a napi hír folyamban. Most az Európai Mobilitás Hét kapcsán is létrejött egy új átkötője a 12. kerületben, és se kapott város szerepe figyelmet érthető módon, hiszen kisebb utcában. Szóval vannak olyan, amelyek nagyon is kapnak városi figyelmet. Ezek közül a Blaha Húzatér képen látható volt, ami az elmúlt időszakban egy nagyon nagy hírértékű esemény volt, hogy a Blaha felújítása kapcsán de például most a napokban a nyugati téren is létrehoztunk három zebrák, és ha minden igaz, és mint egy vagy, akkor a hatodik kereti önkormányzatban, ahol vagyunk működésben, akkor a hiányzó negyedik zebrát is szeretnénk majd létrehozni és megoldani. És igen, a zebráknak még annyira is nincsen vége, még ha minden jól jön, akkor az idei évben a Rákóczi úton is lesz két zebra. A Rákóczi út az a nagy városi autópálya, amit még az elején látunk az egyik a trendszerben esetében, ahol már csak az emberek hiánya is nagy problémát okoz. Még idén kettőt fogunk létrehozni, az egyik az asztóriánál, a másikat pedig a, az én címcánál. Mind a kettő egyébként a közösségi költségvetésnek a finanszírozásában, tehát a Budapest lesz az, hogy a tudnak valósulni. És milyen egyéb elhatározások vannak? Ezt itt már nem is szeretnék sok időt eltörni, de rengeteg minden más is foglalkozunk. A közlekedés biztonság kiemelt szempont most a város számára. Nyilván az ebrák, a véletkerékpársalok is mindezt szolgálják, de például az is, hogy a, ezekben a hetekben, a hónapokban 45 sebességi és bűtetés alkalmas a rendőrséghez között a trafikmaszok helyezünk ki, hogy nagyon fontos a közlekedés biztonság szempontjából. A BKK egy pilot projektet indított, súlyozónák néven, aminek kérdezett az a célja, hogy a iskolák környezetében elősegítsük és összönözzük azt, hogy aki tehetni az inkább gyalogosan, a biciklivel érkezzen és ne autóval hozzuk a gyerekeket az iskolához. Meg nézve a közöket és biztonsági szerepe is, de legalább nagyon fontos, a legfontosabb a személyi formálás, hogy a legfiatalabb generációkat már arra ösztönözzük, arra neveljük, hogy közösségi közlekedéssel, kerékpárral, gyalogosan is nagyon jó és sikerség és biztonságos közlekedni. És nyilván egyébként olyan Egyéb eszközünk is van, amiben igen, tehát a köztöltő megújítások, zöld feletti beavatkozások, amelyek általánosában javítják, növeli a köztöltő tartóségét. Még két ö, ilyen kiemelt terület, az egyik a mobipontok, ami egyrészt azért is fontos, mert elősegíti egy felhatató közlekedési módnak a használatát, megfelelését, de a mai napon talán legalább annyira fontos az az aspektus is, hogy a gyalogos közlekedés szempontjából egy nagyon fontos szempont az, hogy a Budapesten nagyon sokszor olyan szűk járvákon szervezett hagyott dolgokra kellett hozni egy olyan megoldást, ami ezt kezeli, rendezi és nem okoz problémát az ott közlekedő sétáló számára. Úgyhogy a mobipont az mindenképpen egy ilyen megoldás. Pont a napokban volt egy szövetségünk az egyik ilyen rollerszolgáltató szolgáltató céggel, akik kiemelték, hogy európai szinten is kiemelkedő a budapesti együttműködés és megoldás. Miközben rengeteg problémával kell megküzdeni, mert a 
országos szabályozás hiányában arról, hogy nem végződnek a piac szerint, de megtaláltuk a DKK a közös használ megoldást, és sikerült ezt kezelni. Tehát ez mind a roller használó szempontjából, de a gyalogosok szempontjából is nagyon fontos lépés. A módúbi azt gondolom, hogy az egyik legegyértelműbb sikere az elmúlt éveknek. 2021-ben nyújt meg a Sintúta a módúbi 2.0-a, és gyakorlatilag meg sokszor azt az a behasználóan a számát. Most már több mint kétszer a bicikli van, mint a korábbi rendszerben, folyamatosan bővül a hálózat, éppen a napokban fogjuk a 200. gyűjtvágomást is átadni, és lassan, de eléggé a működési terület a nagy lakótelepeket, amelyek a belvárosi zónát övezik, például a kelet felül a jó után már sok tízezer minden is hozzánk fél a bolgói biciklihez, akik ilyen a kétlátásokra jelent. És egy másik példa, a Foglalmasokítási projektek közül például a hetedik kerület, ahol volt egy átfogó olyan beavatkozás, ami alapvetően nagyon alacsony költségekből is forgalmi az átalakításával érkeztünk, csökkenteni az átalakuló forgalom a nagyságát, ami ilyen összetűnő területi szinten is alkalmas arra, hogy, hogy csökkentse a forgalmat. Számomra az egyik leg Megdöbbentő tapasztalat a hetedik életben az volt, amikor a madárfüttyöt lehetett hallgatni és hosszan jelvezni. Én azt mondom, hogy a kubáros előtt ez a micsoda van, hogy a tapasztalatom, de nekem ezért megtudni volt, hogy a belső esélyben városban lehet hallani a madárfát ügyenészni. Úgyhogy azt mondom, hogy ezek a soft measure-ek is nagyon jól mutatják, hogy mi az értelme az ilyen tapasztalatoknak. És akkor én először a parkén úgy szeretném, Továbbhozni az időt is általán a kártyának a szót. Köszönöm szépen a figyelmet. Nyilván lesz még lehetőség, hogy majd beszéljek, és ha vannak kérdések, akkor majd szívesen válaszolok ezekre. Köszönöm szépen. Szeretném akkor bemutatni Petra Jánc vendégüket. Ő a Pécsi Mobilitási Ügynökség gyalogversek felelős munkatársa. A, nagyjából már pontosan tíz éve. Ő előtte három gyerekes anyaként 2006-ban egy nagyon sikeres petíciót indított el Bécsben a kutyaürülékek problémájával foglalkozva. Ezt több mint 160 ezer ember írta alá, és ennek az eredménye az lett, hogy, a, hogy sokkal tisztában lehetnek a Bécsi utcák. Lehet, hogy itthon is egy ilyen problémát kéne először megfogni, és akkor a gyalogos problémák is könnyebben felelnek ilyen figyelmet. Petra munkásságából pár dolgot kiemelnék. Az egyik a 2013-ban ugye elkezdte a, a munkáját a Pécsi Mobilitási Ügynökségnél, ekkor megtartották a gyaloglás évét. Budapesten a Magyarország gyaloglás vége a sláger, itt a gyaloglás éve volt Pécsben. És Ezután a, nagyon sok olyan programot indítottak el, ami lehet, hogy jó példa lenne itthon is. Az egyik például egy, egy gyerekeknek szóló közlekedés tanító eszközcsomag volt, amit bevezettek. Petra alapította meg a Street Life Festivalt, ami a legnagyobb közterekkel és mobilitással, közlekedéssel foglalkozó esemény Bécsben illetve évente elkészítik azt a walking reportot, tehát a gyaloglás felmérő riportot, ami, ami pedig a gyalogos közlekedés monitorozza, és ide tartozik még talán az a gyalogos közlekedési rendszer, vagy út, útirányjelző rendszer kijelölése, ami nagyon úttörő módon elindult Bécsben, tudom, hogy erről már Budapesten is sokszor beszéltünk, ez még nem valósult meg. Most a részletek kiderülnek Petra Gordásából. Hello everybody, thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great honor to me to tell you something about my work uh, of the last 11 years tonight and I hope you will find something that's useful for you, for your community, for your municipality or for your own street life. Uh, first, I brought you a picture of the new built Maria Lieferstraße because I think it's the most um, well-known um, 
project of the last years. It was built uh, in 2014 and 2015. It's the biggest shopping street in whole Austria. Underneath there is an underground and um, because something had to be renovated, uh, the new uh, city government decided to turn it into a pedestrian street and into an um, encounter street. It was, I think, one of the biggest scandals in the field of um, politics and mobility. And after this project, for some years, nobody wanted to touch any street, nobody wanted to build any pedestrian zone or encounter zones. It was uh, uh, very heavy for all the authorities. What happened? What went wrong? We learned from this project that um, it's important to invest in a good vision to tell people what they can expect and what they can gain instead of what they will lose. And maybe it was not, the time was not like today. It's uh, eight years ago and you know that the world has changed since then. So now we, before we change the street, we visualize the vision, we talk about the positive effects, we ask people what they want, uh, we don't ask everything, but we, we tell them, okay, in this range, we want to know your opinion and we will do our best to take it into account. And uh, since then, uh, nevertheless, many streets have changed since then and turned into green spaces, into spaces for pedestrians and for cyclists. I've been invited to talk about cycling infrastructure and I guess it's what you are interested most. <laughs> but I will also talk about walking. Uh, we have the same goals, both cities, we want to reach a model share of 80-20. Um, actually, we have 26% car driving, so there is still something to do. There was a big shift because of the corona pandemic. It changed everything, nearly everything. Unfortunately, not the car driving, but it changed the share of walking dramatically. Ah, why that doesn't work? Okay, but you can see from 28% to 37, 35%. So, uh, Corona made people walking, but Corona also made people cycling. This is our main cycling network. We do have a main cycling network in the city of Vienna since many years and it is developed and financed by the city of Vienna, by the municipality. The network is about 300 meters wide, so every 300 meters you will find a cycling infrastructure. Actually, uh, we do have about 1,800 kilometers of cycling infrastructure, but uh, this means every kind of cycling infrastructure. It is a well-built cycling lane, it is a contraflow lane, it is a cycling route to pedestrian zones or country spaces. It's everything. And we develop it uh, step by step. We know that we cannot remove everything. We try to fix the gaps 
into the network, but we also try to develop the quality of the cycling infrastructure. And in last year, at the beginning of last year, um, something happened that helps us to develop our cycling infrastructure. Since last year, we do have parking management in a whole city. From the city center to the suburbia, everywhere is parking management and you cannot park your car for free anymore. So all the commuters come together have to look for a, a proper parking space and this allows us to remove parking spaces from the surface and plant trees or build cycling lanes. And whenever we do this, we try to communicate it in a very positive way. This is uh, the uh, actual uh, cycling program. We call it the Mega Cycling Program. Uh, it's a program of 50 projects and we build 20 kilometers of cycling paths. And that means cycling paths that are not mixed with cars and mostly not mixed with pedestrians. As I mentioned, we know that we cannot fix everything and that not every kind of cycling infrastructure is good for everyone. We try to do our best to provide cycling lanes that are safe and can be used by elderly people, by children and by people that are not so fit in cycling. For that, we prioritize some rules inside this main network and this is what you can see here, the blue and the green um, rules through Vienna. And you see these two red circles, these are uh, two very important projects I want to um, show you now. It's, uh, it's the main route from the south to the city center. Here you see the same route, but uh, don't uh, uh, worry, it's, uh, it's turned. <laughs> so the north is on the left side and the south is on the right side. Um, uh, you, can list, you can see there is some infrastructure now, but it will be improved by two very big projects. Uh, on the left side, you see this pink area, it's the project Argentinierstrasse. It will be the next very big cycling road. Um, in, in, it's, it will be a cycling infrastructure according to the, the Netherlands standards. And if you come to visit Vienna next year, of uh, course, by train, and if you uh, are at the main railway station in Vienna and you walk or cycle to the city center, you can. Um, you can use this Argentina Straße as brand new cycling infrastructure. And uh, the next one is the Kandigasse. It is uh, the other side of the main railway station. And it is a very important connection to a uh, city development area called Sonnenviertel and to a uh, central place in this district, it's called the uh, Räumerplatz. Um, I don't know, is someone in the audience who knows the Räumerplatz? It's the most famous place in the 10th district, Favoriten, and it is very famous because it's an important public transport lot. It has a public bus, but it has one of Vienna's best ice cream shops. So if you come to Vienna next year, of course by train, and you want to discover the south of Vienna, you may cycle through the Kandelgasse, or you may have a nice walk through the 
pedestrian zone, Favoritenstraße. And uh, please uh, have some ice cream at Bäumer Platz. Above, you see the Argentina Straße as it is now. It's the route from the railway station to the city center. It goes downhill and now it is a street, uh, not very attractive pavement and a two-way cycling lane which is far too narrow. It will be changed into a cycling uh, street as you can see on the visualization, on the rendering and uh, it will be um, better quality, it will provide better quality for both cycling and walking. Here you can see the Herrnigasse, it is the street in the other direction from the railway station into south. Uh, it is a 50 km street, um, typical for this area of Vienna. And it will turn into this, we will have a, um, yeah, a protected cycling lane uh, very wide in two directions. And also for pedestrians, there will be more trees and more green spaces in the street. So um, we have three focus in our cycling programs. Uh, it's as I mentioned, we want to close our gaps. Of course, we want to strengthen cycling in the district. And we want to use synergies as you do in Budapest whenever some tubes have to be removed or uh, renovated, uh, whenever uh, we build a metro line, whenever the, um, the, the railway lines for the tramway have to be changed. <laughs> Then we try to change the surface of the street. And we try to use this, um, this, uh, like this changing moment uh, to make the street better. This is uh, a concept for cycling network in a district in the north of Vienna. I mentioned we do have a main cycling network which is maintained and financed by the city of Vienna. But underneath we also have uh, cycling networks which are maintained and financed by the districts. As Budapest we do have 23 districts in Vienna. And here also are some main connections we want to improve. For example here in the Donnerstadtstraße, it is a huge street, huge, really huge and uh, many cars are here and uh, the action, the cycling path is uh, painted on the pavement. The pavement is very narrow and the, the cyclists are mixed with the pedestrians on the left side of this street. We want to change this into something like this. Instead of one parking lane, we will have a very wide um, cycling path. And that's important because uh, many people live in this area. I will come back to this point later on. And many people work in the city center, so these are commuters inside Vienna. And we hope that uh, more people will use the bike to go to work with this cycling infrastructure. Yeah, and uh, since last year we have a new federal um, uh, traffic act and it allows to turn right on red lights for cyclists and Vienna is uh, the county that uh, is, uh, yes, is very active uh, in this project and the last months we installed a lot of signs that allow <coughs> cyclists to turn right on red line. It's a very popular. So now 
uh, one slide to my favorite topic, it's mobility education. It's a topic I could talk for hours, but don't worry, it's just one slide. Um, we worked in this field the last 10 years and we developed the concept that uh, focus not only on road safety, so that kids may survive on the street, it's very important, but we think it's not enough. We want them to understand the connection between mobility behavior and health, mobility behavior and climate protection. Uh, we do have programs for kindergartens, for primary schools and for um, high schools and we are very proud of our projects because now we roll it out, we reach about 30% of Viennese students and it is said that it is one of the best practices in the German speaking countries. Now let's talk about walking, my second favorite topic, as I'm a walking commissioner in the city of Vienna. Um, I will talk less about infrastructure and more about communication and marketing now. Why do I do this? <clears throat> I do this because walking is harder than cycling in uh, many ways. When I started 11 years ago, I had to start from scratch. There was nearly no NGO in Vienna working in this field. Uh, there was no structure and there was no funding and nobody had any idea what to do about walking such a non-interesting topic. We started to build the brand Vienna Walking, this blue, uh, blue little figure, and we filled it with stories, with life, with events. We started with regular walks through the city. We started building an online platform with service information, with calendars of walks through Vienna, with tips <coughs> for interesting tours through Vienna, with information about new built streets and new projects, with uh, stories about people who like walking in their daily life, and so on. We made the map, a walking map of Vienna with uh, interesting routes but also with information like where is the next public toilet, where is the next public water fountain, where is a nice park or playground. And when we started this in 2015, this was a big campaign, a uh, year of walking campaign, <coughs> There was a big scandal in the media, the biggest newspaper of Austria, the Krone Zeitung, wrote an article. It begins is wasting public money. She's doing something very stupid. She makes a map of walking. Nobody will need it. Because, as we know, you can walk everywhere. I was very upset on this day about this article and I went to the office, sat on my desk, very sad, and then my phone rang. And I expected a journalist or an angry citizen crying with me, but it was a nice old lady and she asked me for such a walking map. And then the phone rang again and again. And, and after two weeks we were running out of all, all of our maps and we had to reprint it. And then next year it was exactly the same story. So what you can learn about it, people appreciate good marketing, good service, and they even appreciate walking maps. Thank you. We also created a walking app. What is this app good for? 
it counts your steps and every month you can change your steps into vouchers, for example, for a cup of coffee in the next bakery or for theater tickets or something else. And you can measure yourself with other app users, with other pedestrians in the city, in your district, in one week, in one month, in one year, etc. etc. You can uh, make your own high scores, you can change your own levels, and so on. It's a very nice tool to raise the image of walking. So, now something technical. We know that um, walking is not as easy as everywhere in the whole city. We know that we have a high share of walking in the city center and in the inner districts. And we have a low share of walking in the suburbia and in areas with small houses. That's no surprise because Walking is dedicated by the density of the city where we have short trips, we have a high share of walking. So after some years watching the image of uh, measuring the image of walking and the behavior of people, I decided to focus <coughs> mainly on the suburban areas where it is more necessary to, um, to improve walking. If we compare walking infrastructure, and with walking infrastructure I mean pavements, if we compare the quality of pavements, we can see that in those districts where we have a high share of walking, we do have wider pavements. And in these districts where we have a small share of walking, we have smaller pavements. So, also this fact is no surprise. Um, we need better infrastructure, but also more density in areas where people use the car and uh, where people don't walk so much or don't cycle so much. And that's why we started the Lido project. The left side of the Danube uh, is covered with two districts. 21st and the 22nd district of Vienna. And as the Danube River was the limes during the Roman Empire, <coughs> we call the right side of Vienna as Cisdanubia and the left side of the Danube as Transdanubia. Many people say it's not really part of Vienna because you have to cross the Danube and that's uh, heavy and you never know if you ever come back. <laughs> and some people even call this area Morgo. As you can see on this slide, uh, it is, uh, it's not me who has uh, created it. It uh, was uh, part of a newspaper article. So after you can imagine it's an area of Vienna with not a very good image. And in fact, it's an area where people tend to use the car. So, one day a local politician called me and told me about this problem. He's responsible for one of these two districts. And he told me about this problem and he said, he wants a better image of this area and he tries to strengthen the, um, the, the 
word Lido. Lido is Italian for beach, it's a positive word. And in German, it's a short way for left side of the Danube. And he called me and said, Petra, let's make a nice Lido walking map. You're so, so good in, in making maps and uh, do marketing for walking. Let's make a map for Lido for my district. And uh, this, is very, well, this was a very important moment because people like me have to wait for such a chance. I said, of course, we can do this. But I guess what you really need is a social process, not a single map. And he said, yes, okay, make a concept and then we will talk. So we made a concept and we made a brand. This is the Lido brand. Lido is short version for the left side of the Danube. Um, <clears throat> it means two districts, Floresdorf and Stomerstadt. And the claim is on the left side of the Danube, things go on. This is the area. Many people do live there, nearly 400,000 people. And the share of car driving is very high, about 36%. The share of walking is very low, and also the share of cycling. Before I mentioned the, site, the district cycling concept of uh, the 22nd district, and with the legal project, we prepared the public opinion and we collected data for a base for a walking concept. We started, as always, by walking. We invited people to walk by rainy weather, by sunny weather, by hot weather. We made walks wherever it was possible. We tried to connect people and started with a local network in uh, the district Rolesdorf and another network in the district Donaustadt. We created the Lido walking map was very beautiful and popular by asking people where do you like to walk, where are your favorite walks through the district and so on. We figured out the, the resources of this area. There is a lot of water, there are many water sites in this area. Not only the Danube but also the new Danube, the old Danube the Machfeldfeld Canal and um, great woods along the Danube, the Lobau. We also worked with the potential. We asked people about the weakness of the walking network. For this case, we created a huge uh, photography from the bird perspective where people could step on. We went with this picture on public spaces, shopping malls, and we tried to get in contact with people, talk with them about quality of walking infrastructure. Because this is not so easy, we created a tool. It is the slippers radios. You see uh, a transparent uh, radius and it figures out a radius where you can go in 5, 10 or 15 minutes from your house. Because the first thing that people do when they see this big picture is they're looking for their own house. And then we gave them this slippers radius and so we very quickly and efficiently came into the conversation uh, we wanted to do. And the red stripes are the walking worms. It's a distance of 30 minutes walk and you can also play with it and figure out where your daily routes are. <coughs> uh, 
And with these methods, and also with the, um, with the app for complaints, we collected more than 500 points where people say, here we do have a problem by walking. We do have a problem with the walking infrastructure. And then we collected data from mobile phones and analyzed where people do walk, where are the highest frequencies of pedestrians, so that we could figure out where are um, the biggest need of improvements. And then we analyzed the infrastructure data, the width of pavements, the duration uh, for waiting at traffic lights, the uh, existence of trees in the streets, and so on. And we found out in a model, we made a walking model, we found out the um, the effects, what makes people walk. We found out that the shorter the trip, the more people do walk. We found out that the more possibilities of shopping, there is groceries, and so the more people walk. The more trees in the streets, the more people walk. Public transport nuts have a positive effect. Money has a negative effect. The richer people are, the less they walk in their daily life. Benches and nice areas for recreation have positive effects. Water sites have positive effects. And elderly and younger people. The more elderly and young people are um, children are among the inhabitants of an area the more people walk. And this model fits to about 70%. So this model uh, is the basis for the master plan walking. It's the walking strategy in these two districts. And why do these districts make a master plan walking? That's another story. Just that we have it. Since two years, something great happened. Um, the Federal Ministry for Climate Protection decided to make a fund for pedestrian infrastructure. This fund was dedicated for cycling infrastructure for the last about 15 years and for mobility management, but it was never dedicated for walking. And this changed two years ago. So this fund was opened to walking infrastructure and municipalities may apply for this fund, but they have to make a master plan walking. They have to prove that they have a strategy for walking. So more and more districts in Vienna now make a master plan for walking. Next year we will have 18 districts with the master plan of walking. And also these two districts in Transdanubia or Mordor or Lido will also have a master plan of walking. And this is the story I wanted to tell you how to support local authorities to, to make good decisions for active mobility. This is uh, some kind of, uh, this is one of the first master plan walkings in the eighth district and it, I learned today that the name of this district is also Josefstadt. This is right like in Budapest. Amazing. <coughs> so uh, this is the master plan of walking it figures out the main uh, routes that are important for pedestrians because it, there are shopping streets, because there are schools, um, because there are public transport nodes. And one of the first projects funded by this federal fund is uh, Feilgasse, 
Um, it's a place in front of a school and uh, before it was used as parking space by teachers and this has been changed into a car free area with uh, water fountains and trees and benches and students can learn outside if they want and it's a great place and it was opened at the beginning of this year. So here you can see how many districts are working on a master plan of walking. Meanwhile, 15 and uh, further three districts announced that they will do it next year. So, um, this is what I wanted to tell you. Um, if you wonder why there is only a young lady walking, don't worry. Just also feel represented if you are a cyclist. And now I have to say something I've never said before. Köszönöm a figyelmet, jó estét! Köszönjük mi is a figyelmet eddig, most átülünk ide az asztalhoz. Samut is várjuk a kerekasztalnál, ami inkább tév alatt. És ha már köszönet nyilvántásnál vagyunk, amíg itt átállunk, szeretném megköszönni Bécs város főképviseletének, hogy segítettek létrehozni ezt az eseményt. Nagyon érdekes, hogy Bécsben van főképviselet is, és hasonló tudáscseréket tesznek lehetővé, hogy én pedig átjövök. So uh, this will be some kind of a language fluid discussion. So some, sometimes I'm, I will be speaking Hungarian and sometimes I will be speaking English. And sorry for everyone. Um, so first question to both of you is that um, what was the, the best thing that you would uh, mention from each other's presentation and, and maybe um, what you would do in Budapest first?
sometimes it happens that uh, we feel that the, the easiest part to, to, to leave out is communication. And your examples show that it is really important that has a cru crucial role, role in um, making these efforts successful. So that's something what I would highlight from the dress. Show now that you have the microphone. Mm, the second question goes for you. Um, we saw the two model shares, model share goals of Budapest and Vienna. Um, how do you feel about our um, success on the, the way towards those goals for 2030? Yeah, well, our goals were set up in uh, 2014, and uh, by that time it was. 16 years to 2030, so it was like something, like a vision, it was far, far away. And another example, I was talking about um, the transport safety uh, strategy that we have, and uh, the city assembly just, uh, uh, we had it in June, right, and we had a decision on it. And it, had a very, it has a very long-term goal. By 2050, we want to reduce to zero uh, fatal fatalities uh, uh, in Budapest. But what is very important that we had a mid-term kind of mid-term goal as well by 2030 uh, to reduce the cost. And what Budapest didn't have before uh, in the mobility plan, they didn't have a, a mid-term goal. And, and that now I see it as a problem because they were like, okay, we are in a hurry, we still have time, and then you didn't see the progress in these numbers. And then, of course, things came up that no one expected, like COVID uh, and so on. So, Budapest is in a very tough situation, I would say. What we see that after two years um, of COVID, now we came back. Uh, kind of the, the numbers of riding public transport, which is good, but it is a, a very challenging situation to achieve those goals by 2030. And speaking of challenges in uh, model share goals, Patrick mentioned that uh, you have challenges in reducing the share of car traffic. What's the reason, or is there any uh, reason that you see? The reason is that uh, car driving is very easy in Vienna. Yeah, it works. So car driving still is very easy in Vienna, and it's smooth and it's fast. And um, nobody wants to take something from car drivers. So we want to give everyone something, but we don't want to take something away. And uh, what we started now in the whole area of Vienna, not just in the city center, is to step by step reduce parking space and to turn it into green spaces or cycling lanes or so. I think we do have a problem because the share of car driving is stable between 26 and 28 percent for the last 15 years and we want to reach our goal at 2025 that's coming soon so i think we have to to give uh, people a vision of good life in the city without a car. We try not to speak about what people will lose, but what people will win with a new kind of street, with more trees in the street. We learned that trees have become very popular. I think five or six years before, no district wanted to plant trees in the street because this is very expensive <clears throat> and people were not used to claim for it. Now everybody wants to have a tree in front of the window. 
because we know that it's very hot in summer. This is something people can feel. So climate change is one reason for, for a change in the mindset. Corona pandemic changed something. People discovered their own city, their own district, their own neighbors. Uh, some people started to uh, go to work by bicycle um, to avoid public transport or to walk. We could see this immense shift of walking during the pandemic. And I hope that um, this will turn on. And the third point is the um, Fridays for Future moving, movement. The, the younger people um, claim for, for a change in our, yeah, in our mobility policy. But I think, yes, we do have a problem. It is a big challenge and I have no idea actually how we will reach our goal at 2025. Uh, but you mentioned about this parking management that uh, in the whole area of Vienna, because most of the locals have to pay for, for their own parking, right? On the streets. Did I understand it well? Yes, everybody has to pay. <clears throat> if, uh, if you want to park your car in public space, you have to pay. It's How not much? much. It's not much. It's mas much less than a uh, garage. How much is it? I, I can't say. Yeah. It is different in different districts, right? Um, no, it's the same. Okay. And uh, did you see um, the number of cars uh, decreasing in Vienna since this new management? The problem is, as it's so cheap, the inhabitants of Vienna started to quit the garage spaces. And the commuters started to rent a parking space in the garage. So there's no way. <laughs> we have to reduce parking space at the surface. Okay, but because there is uh, one district in Budapest, and maybe Shamu, you can talk about this, its example in brief, about the eight district. Josef Stadt in Budapest has this new uh, parking laws. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't know the exact numbers. But um, from this year on, uh, the AF district made uh, for its citizens uh, car parking uh, uh, not free anymore. So basically, in everywhere in Budapest, even there are uh, parking lots where people have to pay for it for more users. It's not in the whole city, just in the inner city. Uh, in almost every district, the, the citizens who live there can park. For free, and the AFD district uh, started from this year that uh, their citizens also have to pay um, a yearly fee, which is kind of low and it's different uh, based on the location in the district. So the inner city is more expensive than the other parts. And I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, I will look to the colleagues uh, from the from the audience, but uh, but you can already tell if you are just walking on those streets that uh, cars just disappeared. I don't know, 20% or 15%? Do they have any idea where, where did they go? <laughs> Whose cars were there? Well, that you really have to ask for, for yeah. them. But uh, why is it important that uh, this gave the, the municipality the possibility to remove uh, parking lots? <coughs> and they use this uh, kind of as a campaign for freedom of uh, sidewalks. And uh, they are taking up those uh, parking places which were placed on the sidewalks. So in the recent past few weeks, we saw these uh, these uh, actions, and you really saw uh, people walking there as a, like marching there and uh, like a critical mass, critical, critical walking mass on the sidewalks. So it's a, it's an example of one district, but I really think it's much more inspirational, and I really hope that it's gonna be. Uh, other kind of pandemic <laughs> in the for the other uh, districts that they will follow this uh, agenda because it seems powerful. And 
I would like to move into the questions of the institutional background of this whole working and cycling uh, scheme in Vienna and in Budapest. Um, it is very interesting when you mentioned that there is this federal uh, source of money that for which the districts can apply if they have this working master plan. Um, but you also showed us those uh, the right leg offensive. I love this phrase. Um, so who and when decides uh, on what projects uh, do we and I have in walking and cycling for the next years or for the next year? Um, usually um, there is some change moment. Usually um, there is a chance, chance to change the street if something has to be fixed if the surface has to be fixed or uh, the metro station underground, the metro line underground has to be fixed or, or bit new, new bit or um, if some water tubes or so have to be fixed. Um, <clears throat> we, knew, we know when this event will come and then um, the local authority, the traffic department, the often the uh, transportation of Vienna, Vienna Linien, and also city planners come together and make some plans. So there is a very long planning process, then parallel for the surface for the surface. Then parallel, there are negotiations about the financial uh, issues. And if it is a bigger project, uh, um, there is also a participation project. But um, we don't start the participation project from scratch. We start it if there are some versions two or three different versions from the planning process, then the neighborhood um, is asked what they want and then the uh, planning process continues. Then there is uh, uh, information offensive with uh, pictures like some I showed you and yes, and then there is the, the building itself. In the first part, you said that if you have, a, for example, a reconstruction of water pipes, there is a possibility, not only a possibility, but there is a, a part in the whole process when they are planning the reconstruction of water pipes about how the surface will look like after they, they recover it. They don't build back the same layout which there was. Maybe that's maybe a good example for here, Shomu. Of course, but uh, I think it's also an issue of uh, financing. I mean, uh, if you have uh, enough, enough, enough money after a water pipe construction that you are not only recovering that exact, I don't know, one or two meters wide pavement that was affected by the water pipe reconstruction, but you can redo the whole uh, section and the whole street, then of course you have the possibility to change it but it's clearly not the situation in, in Budapest. Do we, do we use it? Like for example in Hongwe Duxa we had the same kind of situation but we, we covered it with the same way that which there was before. No new bike lane or pedestrian crossings were built. I don't know the exact case, but I don't know if they repaved the, the whole yeah. section. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. But uh, now I was thinking about the petrol mention. So if you were waiting for for these kind of projects that they will affect in a way the street. So then we can rethink the whole thing and then we can uh, change things. Then imagine how long we would wait for bike lanes on North Korea. So simply we don't we don't have the financing sources, such a regular uh, change and renovation of these streets that it would be enough frequent enough to change our yeah, I think this is two different things now. Uh, and Petra, how does it look like? Like you as a walking commissioner or Martin as cycling commissioner, are you involved in these kind of plannings? I as a 
Booking Commission, I'm not involved in the planning um, because there is no central uh, coordination of the walking network. As you know, the funding is a very new instrument and uh, walking is an issue on district level. And also the, the districts have also to finance improvements in the walking network. So for a long time it was not very popular, not very interesting. For cycling, it's different since many, many years. Since many, many years, there is this federal fund and this led to uh, a main uh, cycling network. It is one of few issues that have been uh, re-centralized. <laughs> so uh, we have a decentralization in the municipality. That means that districts district authorities are responsible for walking and cycling infrastructure. But the main cycling network has been re-centralized. It's a topic, uh, it's issue for the municipality. Um, because 15 years ago, there was this federal fund and the city of Vienna is managing this fund. Uh, so, and they realized that if every district makes its own cycling network, then at the district borders, they don't fit together. <laughs> so that's the reason why cycling is different. There is more structure in the city's administration. There has been, or there is more money and there are more people working together on it. Um, for walking it's different. Uh, we do have expertise in accessibility. Um, we, we are asked in terms of accessibility, but uh, I do not the same work as Martin Bloom, as cycling coordinator is doing. Um, as I mentioned, my heart my work is harder. So you are kind of like a participatory actor in between the residents and the municipality, if, if I'm kind of right, that uh, you work on these participatory projects um, and also the campaign, so it's not just a top-down <coughs> communication, but you involve all the residents or, or the local citizens. For example, um, in school streets, we're managing school streets in Vienna, and it always starts with um, the interest of parents in a school. It always starts with uh, parents and neighbors, and uh, we uh, bring them together with the authorities, with the traffic authority, with the local authority, and then we manage that uh, school street is realized. So this is a mini participation process, yeah. And you have how many school streets we have now? Which is Actually we have nine, we will open a further one this year, yeah. And they are closed for cars for the rush hours, right? And it's open for children, yes, okay. and uh, it's uh, closed for cars for half an hour before school starts and some uh, school streets uh, also have some time slot in the afternoon. Michon, how do you see the institutional, um, how the institutions work for cycling and walking to, to reach home of the share goals? Are they effective enough in Budapest or, or maybe these kind of examples from, from Vienna? Of course, there is always room for improvement, for sure. Um, we also have this um, two-level system of municipalities, and uh, district municipalities have a very important role. As you can see, if you have a if you have an ambitious district that can achieve a lot, um, and we have some of them. Uh, but still a lot to do and uh, room for improvements. 
but I always have to highlight the, the importance of financiation. So with the, the lack of uh, budget, with the lack of money, it's very hard to achieve uh, very ambitious goals. And um, an example you know, about cycling and uh, walking, but also public transportation within the city and between Budapest and, it, and its aggregation. So yeah, I'm sure we can learn a lot from Vienna. It's, it's like a national goal to, to reach Vienna or reach Austria. So it's a national sport for us to, to say that we have, it's, we always say that we have to, we want to reach, but somehow we don't really learn. Uh, Sometimes, uh, so for example, the, the brave communication. And as I understand these uh, roles, like uh, the cycling and walking commissioner, you have a very important part in, in promotion of uh, these modes of transport. So that's certainly something that could use uh, the best as a good example. How um, much we need to find a best So I will open up the conversation for all. But before that, I, I would like to. So Készítettek a kérdéseitekkel. Uh, this is the language fluid part of the conversation. Um, but I would like to, to touch one very important topic is the autosüldözés, war on cars. Um, we, it looks like that we, the next municipal elections will be about, around the war on cars or the claim to war on cars that the city is waging against the honest fathers who own a vehicle. Um, so how does it look like in Vienna? Do you have a lot of debate on, um, on taking away car parking spaces? Because you said that you don't do enough, but clearly you can see that you do, or taking away lanes, or how do you manage this kind of loss from, from other parts of the community? Um, yeah, that's basically the question. So I, I didn't understood. Uh, it's about the parking management and how to remove it's about, parking space. It's mostly space. about communication. <coughs> so how do we manage the, when the media, is there attacks in the media against the municipality when they take away space from cars, for example? Um, so I wouldn't say that it is always easy to remove parking space. It depends on the neighborhood. But um, if you, um, maybe one example, uh, in the years 2009, 2020 and uh, 21, we had a very nice project called the Cool Streets. So during the hot summer period, we opened some small streets for the neighborhood and we made it car free as a pop up project and uh, we provided uh, seeds and plants and some small social activities so that uh, the neighborhood may enjoy public space during summer. And this meant that people couldn't park the car during this period. And the first period it was about six weeks and, and the second year we did it for three months. And we made a request, we did an evaluation, we asked the people, was it a problem for you? And we could see that it was not a problem for the people. So maybe um, if you have a big scandal because car drivers claim for their parking, uh, places. Just don't only hear their opinion, also ask other people. Maybe these people are not the majority. We learned during the cool streets that the majority is not that dependent from from parking spaces. Many people don't even have a car. When we did the first school street in the second district, Leopoldstadt, I think it's the same name. No, it's no, the 50th year. 50 year. But... Okay, but you also have a Leopoldstadt. Um, when we did the first school street, we also did, made an evaluation 
and we could figure out that School Street is an advantage for 200 or 300 students together with parents and teachers. And people who really have a problem with the car parking are maybe three or five. So you always should take into account what is the majority who benefits from, from a project. Yes, what we see that uh, participatory methods can help you. So, for example, now this is the, the time for advertising uh, our uh, participatory budget that you can vote uh, on until the end of September, and you can decide about um, one uh, of the points. So, if you see those projects from the previous years, but even from this year, that you can see that uh, most of the projects are connected to greening the city or walking and cycling. And uh, for us, this is a very important case that if you ask people what, what to do with the city, they will come up with uh, green and sustainable ideas to make it simple. So, yes, we should open up. The, the question, the planning uh, process, and we have the more people than only those who have their loud voice against our plans. And now is the time for questions. Az volt a terv, hogy uh, szeretnénk részletesen adásokat, de hogy mindenki akarunk időt is adni. Tehát azt szeretnénk kérni, hogy 17 percünk van, Uh, nem annyira állításokat kérnék most, hanem kérdéseket, és ha lehet tömören. Lehet angolul is, lehet uh, magyarul is, Petránál van egy ilyen fülés, hogyha magyarul akartok kérdezni, nyugodtan lehet. Ezt már is én fogok szaladkálni, megoldom ezzel mikrofonnal, és kiveszem a kezekből, akkor első, második, harmadik. methods of transportation are related to public transport in all these planning processes. So I'm very much for walking, but uh, somehow I always uh, consider it as part of a bigger route in which public transport is also involved. So uh, how, how mixed are these two and, and do you have to make decisions uh, between the two, where, where they seem to compete, for instance, should a uh, street be used for letting buses through it or making it a, a walk and cycle on the street? There is always a competition between every mode of transport in a public space. There is a competition between walking and cycling and also public transport and also car driving and also car parking and also trees and all the other stuff that has to be installed in public space. So we try to support the eco-mobility, so active mobility and public transport. But generally, we, um, we don't want to um, disturb public transport. We want public transport first and on the second layer, cycling and walking, generally spoken. Not everywhere, but um, of course this is a problem. It's, it's not only a competition in space, but it is also a competition in time, uh, when we talk about the traffic lights, for example. And we try to get more green light for pedestrians, then we discuss with public transport um, and sometimes you get 
some seconds, but uh, usually public transport comes first. Uh, City of Vienna is very proud of public transport system. Uh, it is very good and it is very cheap and very popular. But as you could see at the model share figure, during the corona pandemic, the share of public transport decreased. And hopefully it will increase again um, instead of car driving. So that's, there is some potential, but we don't know um, what people will do if they decide uh, to use public transport instead of walking and cycling or instead of car driving. First of all, of course you can mix them. So you can, they, are, they easily fit together in a, in a journey chain, for example. Uh, for the last, last mile, you can use, for example, the bike chain. That's what I do actually, I'm using uh, metro and trams, but when I'm getting around my, the city hall, my work uh, place, then I use bikes. So you can easily uh, mix them. And second of all, I think uh, it's kind of a new issue in Budapest, and I would, uh, I didn't plan to, to to come up with this topic with 100 with the, the airport express bus and the uh, Lund, but but it relates to your question because I don't remember uh, uh, a formal case when the question came up of public transportation and cycling competing which is not the case in Inului because the Metro Line 3 is the absolute winner of this competition and that's public transport. But, uh, and I think the reason why it didn't came, uh, come up before that uh, cycling was just simply the, the last, always. Uh, cars and public transport were competing before and no one even mentioned walking. So, and now that the, the city hall has a new approach with cycling, and really uh, building new lanes where it, it wasn't possible before, now we have this kind of debate as well, which is very interesting. And I also think that uh, public transport by numbers uh, has uh, a winning, or has to have a, a winning uh, place. But I think it's a new issue which is emerging in Budapest. Én itt fogok kérni, hogy, hogy a, a, majd a kérdéseket is próbáljuk meg minél rövidebbre, és esetleg mutassatok rá, hogy kitől kérdeztek, hogyha valami nagyon specifikus a kérdés. Rend, hi, thank you so much. Uh, Máté Mohos from uh, RTL Hungary. Uh, my question is uh, relates back to this so-called uh, war on cars, uh, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, and uh, my question for Petra is about uh, the political and citizen pushback uh, you got after, uh, or the <coughs> city government got after uh, making uh, parking, uh, you know, uh, paying for expensive everywhere in the city uh, in the past year. And uh, to Shamu, my question is about when making uh, decisions about uh, cycling and pedestrian infrastructure, how often uh, are your hands tied by uh, this fear or prospect of political pushback and uh, how often do you choose caution because of this fear? I'm not sure if I understood the question. It's about the political pushback uh, after taking measures like uh, parking management or so. Yeah, after free parking was over in Vienna. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> the topic is not new. Uh, I think 25 years ago, there was, uh, there was um, a poll among uh, Viennese citizens and they were asked if they want uh, parking fees. And of course, people said no, because it was the wrong question. Um, but uh, this led to the situation that uh, one district after another decided 
decided to install parking fees, parking uh, taxes. And at the beginning, um, this, the area was very small, it was in the city center, and step by step, other districts joined. And then, after many, many years, the majority of districts had parking management. And this led to the situation that the neighbor district without parking management, what do you think happened? All the cars came into this district. So it was not so unpopular anymore to install parking management because people knew that all these commuters from Lower Austria or from Burgenland or from Hungary, Hungary for example, uh, uh, parked their car in front of, of your house. And uh, so it became more popular because of this parking pressure. Yes, so it is not the same, um, it is not the same negative, uh, it has not the same negative image than 25 years ago when people were asked, do you want to pay for your, for your free parking space? Yeah, so I, I, I think it was not such a big uh, problem. Yes, maybe in some er areas of the suburbia, yes, maybe, but it, first, it's not very expensive. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know the price because I, for myself, I have no car. Um, it's not very uh, expensive and most of the citizens understand that it makes sense. So the question was whether the concerns or the fear of political debate affect our decisions on cycling lanes and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Well, I would say it doesn't really affect what you want to do, it more it does affect uh, how we do. So we have a very strong commitment to the mayor's program, that we, what we want to do uh, in the city that we want to create a more livable place with more sustainable transport. So the goals are really clear and we, uh, and we are committed to achieve them. But we, we also believe in uh, involving people, involving citizens, and we believe that it is more effective in achieving these goals if we do together with the people of the best uh, than if we are doing it against. So it's, uh, of course, when we plan how to do it, and what kind of measures we want to do, what kind of participatory uh, measures we want to use. I could mention the, the case of Chainbridge, for example, with the so-called Apo village. Um, we, of course, uh, plan the best way to, to gain um, the the, the people's support for, for each project. So I would say the, the goals and, the, and what we want to achieve is uh, solid, but of course different cases need different uh, uh, tools in achieving these goals. <laughs> Két kérdésünk van hátra, és azt szeretném kérni mindkettőtöktől, hogy nagyon röviden és tömören és célra törően fogalmazzátok meg, mert nem szeretnék kifutni az időt. My question is about, it's not political, it's technical. Uh, I was in Vienna a few weeks ago cycling using Google Maps, and it led me to really wrong places in terms of, you know, it wasn't really a bicycle lane. And I'm wondering, is there a cooperation? Like, is Google Maps, for instance, updated? Like, is there a connection? Like, do they know if there is this street right now is not cyclable at all? And because I think many people use it, uh, and it can make people, you know, just avoid cycling because it gives you wrong information. If you know, I know that's not your uh, territory. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know how uh, Google Maps is uh, gaining their. Uh, database, we have open data 
uh, in the municipality, every infrastructure in everything, cycling, walking, uh, car driving, has an open database and can be used by any applications. Uh, we do have um, a mobility routing platform uh, which can be used by um, different applications and um, yeah there, there are several routing apps that are very helpful uh, if you are in Vienna. <coughs> I 
like to know if uh, there is, uh, so it's my question related to Peter Bass, but I'm asking it to Petra, if there is a specific action uh, done uh, against uh, cars uh, parking on uh, bicycle lanes, and on, uh, I don't know if the most motorcycles uh, are riding on the bicycle lane, but it's very, very often here in Budapest, so I don't know if there is specific action in Budapest or any other authorities uh, going to do something against this problem. Sorry, was your, your question was for Petra? Uh, if, they, if you have any specific uh, actions uh, against cars parking on bike paths. And what is that? We do have a campaign against cars parking on the railways, on the tramway lines. Yeah, we saw that. This is a topic. Um, actually, and uh, the the Wiener Linien, uh, the, the Viennese uh, traffic uh, company, they um, figured out how much it cost. Uh, all these traffic jams caused by the parked cars on the ferry lines. So parking on Cycling lanes, I wouldn't say that it never happens, but we have no special campaign for it, actually. But it is a topic, and it is a very important topic for me that we face um, demotorization of active mobility. All these vehicles with electric motors um, get stronger and stronger, faster and faster, bigger and bigger, and they all use cycling lanes. And most of the cycling infrastructure in Austria, and I would say also in Vienna, is mixed with pedestrians. So it is a pedestrian topic. And uh, this is something to me that's very important and we have to fix this problem. And we dis discuss this in some weeks at federal level because we have fixed something in our laws to distinguish between vehicles um, that are driven by our muscles and maybe supported by a motor in, in a certain way on the one hand and on the other hand in vehicles that are driven by a motor and shouldn't use the cycling lane or the pavement. Köszönjük szépen mindenkinek, hogy eljöttetek. Thank you very much, Petra and Shamu, for being here with us. Bennem nagyon sok kérdés maradt. Rengeteg van a papíromon, meg a fejemben, biztos bennetek is. Még itt lebontjuk a izét, biztos a, a termet, biztos tudtok beszélgetni a vendégeinkkel. Nem az egészet, az marad. A, ajánljuk figyelmetekbe az átalakuló köztereny kiállítást, amit jövő hétvégéig tudtok megnézni a Városháza Parkban, és uh, szeptember 30-ig a közösségi költségvetést, ahol nagyon sok gyalogos és kerékpáros uh, projektre is lehet szavazni, a kicsi helyi ötletektől a nagyokig. Úgyhogy uh, még egyszer köszönjük a Bécsi Főképviseletnek is a támogatást, illetve Klímas Körzetügyi Főosztály munkatársainak. Én személyesen köszönöm a segítségeket, jó éjszakát kívánunk mindenkinek. Akinél van füles, ne felejts el lerakni ott az asztalon.